Hey guys, this is Jester Boris with I Want to Be a GM, and welcome to Dungeons and Dragons Through the Ages, Part 3, The Fighter. And we're going to be discussing The Fighter in 5th edition, the current edition of Dungeons and Dragons. To my right, and joining me today, I'm Troy, the Planescape Guy. And on the left, Gwydion and the Long Winded. And I've got one edition from what we were talking about before in 3rd uh, edition. You need to go online, it's still there, it's still free, and download. All the Weeby Goblins modules. It's a blast. You can even use it in 5th edition. You can take the monsters and bring them over into it. Weeby Goblins. Everybody has to talk like a goblin and play like a goblin. And it takes you from just being a whelp on up. It's hilarious. It's a blast. You can uh, take kids into it because it's... it's you mean it's age-appropriate for it younger age players? It is age-appropriate, at <laughs> least to start with it is. But, uh, yeah, do that. There's a lot of stuff out there. There's still a lot of free stuff. But the Weeby Goblins campaigns uh, we have done as 3rd edition. We've also done it as 5th. So what Gwydion is saying fun. is use your Google machine for additional Dungeons & Dragons resources. Yep. And uh, you're going to be able to <laughs> be able to find plenty of them. Yeah. Uh, since we're talking about 5th edition, if you don't happen to have the books, uh, the 5th edition SRD is available. Uh, you should be able to find that with a web search fairly easily. And that's going to contain most of your core mechanics, core rules to get you started if you don't yet have any of the books. And Wizards D &D of the Coast. Beyond. Yeah. Uh, D&D &D yeah. Beyond. And, of course, the official Wizards of the Coast website. Uh, you'll be able to download the character sheet. There are also several apps if you prefer to play uh, off of your phone. They also and, have the basic rule set online that you can download for free. Yes. Um, and then when it comes to 5th edition particularly, we like to recommend the starter set and the essentials kit. Yes. Um, both of those are great. They'll have uh, pre-generated characters, an adventure you can play, um, and for 50 bucks you can get both sets. And what's nice about that is it's not something that just you do. It's something you and your friends can play for a couple weekends while you're looking for a group or getting a handle on the game as you join this tabletop role-playing game hobby. It has dice. It has a Dungeon Master screen and Actually, it'll it'll uh, it has enough in there that you can play for up to a month or so. And there's yeah, quite a bit to it. It's uh, ready to play right out of the box. Yeah. So uh, we do recommend the players handbook. Well, that'd be your first uh, yeah, as you begin be to expand purchase. into the hobby. Yeah. Yep. Players handbook will be your first. Yep. But if you start there with the starter set or the essentials kit that you can pick up from your local hobby store, yep. it's going to get you into the game, and we'd be glad to have you. Buy local, play local. Mm -hmm. So starting it uh, with the fighter. Troy, you've got the book open for us. Uh, where are we at with hit points on the fighter now that we're in 5th edition? Uh, they still have a die 10. So die 10, like we've seen in previous editions, with the exception of 4th, that had its own sort of thing going on. And the exception of Barbarian right, has a die 12. So uh, Barbarian... <laughs> he is BB. He's thick. Um, <laughs> the Barbarian used to be a subclass of fighter. Right. Now we see him broken out as their own class. Uh, yeah. Other classes that used to be considered subclasses that are broken out. We have Paladin and Ranger. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the other things that we have now, uh, yes, there's the full list, um, is that we've got uh, different archetypes that you can select in those classes. So uh, for Thief, for example, you can go Thief Illusionist or Thief Assassin. Uh, Fighter's got a couple as well. Um, and that's just in the core book. So we're going to kind of keep it to the core book. The expanded content's out there, and there are a lot of different options as you begin to get into those different um, books like um, the Unarched Arcana and so on. So, And we do know that thieves are now called rouges. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean rogue. I mean rogue. So. Uh, it's Gwydion. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> so we've talked a little bit about the options that you have as a player in selecting how you're going to actually play your fighter. And uh, we still have a lot of options here as far as your fighting style goes. Mm -hmm. um, and so, let's see, you adopt uh, yeah. fighting style. No, well, I, yeah, it's there. It's, yeah. Why well, get sort of stuff? Read your book. What kind of fighting styles do we get <laughs> there, Gwydion? I don't know. I can't. Uh, yeah. Player's Handbook. There's separate ones for the Player's Handbook, Sword Coast Adventures Guide, and so on as they came out with the mm -hmm. Player's Handbook. Uh, Champion, Battlemaster, and Eldritch Knight. Uh, was kind of the three paths. So it mm -hmm. limited all the plethora that you had available in uh, the third edition and kind of gave you some distinct well, paths. It to added work guidance, with to, especially to, yes, in the core book. With. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you uh, pick up Sword Coast Adventure Guy, you got the Purple Dragon Knight. Uh, 
uh, Xanthar's Guide to Everything, Arcane Archer, Cavalier, uh, and Samurai. Back. <laughs> Cavalier came back. Uh, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, the Psy Warrior. Mind Players, that's all I'm going to say. Just yeah. Mind and, Players. And the Rune Knight. <laughs> uh, so, but uh, basically with the Player's Handbook, and if you pick up, uh, like Jester was saying, if you pick up that starter set uh, and, and so on, you uh, will have the Champion, Battlemaster, and Elder Knight. And work from there. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about some of the different fighting styles we've got available, Troy. They're badass. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they've got some of the different fighting styles, and they call some you know, great fighting, archery, and dueling, um, two weapon fighting, blah, 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 blah. I, I lean towards Eldritch Knight because he's the fighter magic user, changed a little bit to make him more yeah. modern for the fifth edition. Uh, and the the magic seems to be more towards the combat magic. Right, know? it's evocation for sure. Fireball! <laughs> yes. So, yeah. You go, what? What? Fireball is a third level spell. You have to be a fifth level caster. It comes in at level 17. <laughs> Learn to play a fighter. <laughs> okay, so, you're right. I forgot about that. They do actually get it. But... That takes a while. Thank takes... you, thank you, stand in, Mr. Producer. <laughs> <laughs> Just play Pathfinder and get a Magus. It's fine. <laughs> but die to a breach. Or you can just have so, a seat. They have a bunch of different types of attacks that they describe and and all of them are worked into it as uh, some type of skill. So that you have to train in doing this type of attack yeah. or this type of uh, uh folly in your middle of your attack. Yeah. The thematics are still in place to <clears> justify <throat> some of the mechanics. And um we end up with a lot that is um you know, themed really well. So, uh, particularly with uh, the champion and being able to issue different battlefield orders, or you, you end up more in the tactician. We saw a lot of that in the earlier editions where uh, you were expected to lead armies and have grand battles, build castles, and that stuff. Uh, the champion archetype would be really good for that. Uh, the Eldritch Knight mixes uh, sword play and magic, and it does it very effectively without overshadowing your magic user. So, you know, in the party mix, to be able to have an extra caster when the crunch comes in without losing your fighter, depending on how you focus, um, it ends up making for a really great character. You just had to make sure with the Elder Knight that you did a, a real dump into intelligence as well to where you actually had access to the spells, plus was a, were able to cast them and get enough spell levels yeah. to do your work. Attributes with, are still really important. Yeah, the uh, the champion was pretty much your your power fighter. Uh, they, they just uh, concentrated on simple force, simple power. Uh, the battle master, um, they focused on unique resources, uh, empowering their weapon flourishes, mm -hmm. um, known as maneuvers. Uh, and actually, those are some of the best abilities in the game. Are, are the maneuvers mm -hmm. of a battlemaster? Yeah, um, they're. I feel like they're underutilized in fifth edition as well. Mm -hmm. um, so if you haven't really given it a chance, try a battlemaster. Mm -hmm. I think you'll be surprised on that one. Um, oops, sorry, my eyeballs itching. Sorry. sorry. Disarming strike. They've got parry. They've got trip. Uh, when you're in a battle and you're utilizing these things, all of a sudden you're devastating your opponent. Yeah. Now, Troy, one of the things that we see is a lot of uh, level-based um, unlocks. Is that right? Everything's based on uh, levels or this skill plus this skill mm -hmm. allows you to do this other thing. Right. And so um, multiple attacks and attack proficiency were a thing that we see still with the fighter. Uh, fighter will pick up their first extra attack at second level, mm -hmm. um, and we'll end up with uh, three extra attacks for a total of four by 20th level. Um, there are certain classes or, or things that have been added to the game that can modify or, or change that. But um, the fighter will be, still be able to attack more times per round than anybody else at the high levels. Mm -hmm. um, so the fighter definitely still has the advantage in that regard. Now, monks had a lot of advantages just because of the type of class they were. Uh, yeah. As and, we, you you know, know, with their speed and their attacks and the way they, they utilize themselves, the... Um, uh, well, Monk had been a subclass of Fighter. Yeah. Now uh, they're their own class. Right. And whereas a Fighter, actually any one of the classes have to have a minimum 13 in their prime requisite, Fighter being Strength. Monks had to have a 13 in two classes. 
Yeah, a little or in two attributes. Right, a little bit different. But yeah. when they broke Monk out in third edition, uh, Monk has stayed its own class now in fifth edition. Uh, you'll see a little bit of that carryover in from the histories, but for the most part, um, you don't have to be able to do a whole lot of fighter to be a good monk, but you do have to do a lot of fighter to be a good fighter. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it sounds stupid, but it really is. So, yeah. you know, whether you're dealing with dueling um, as a finesse-based character, two-weapon fighting, the defender with a shield, or archer, and you're going to go ranged um, as part of that... Um, you know, fighting style that you're going to employ for your character, you know, you there are certain things that you'll have to won't do, change your gear, and those um, to be effective in that role. The arcane archer uh, could magically empower trick shots. Yeah, and and that's what was really sweet uh, in fifth edition yeah. on that. The cavalier focused on mounted battle, so mm -hmm. they were like, I can't get on our mule and do mounted battle <laughs> in the dungeon. You know, so dungeon crawls. Dungeon Crawls in 5th Edition are now a side quest. As a matter of fact, when 3rd Edition came out, uh, a lot of AD&D, uh, Dungeon Crawls became a side quest the second AD&D came out because you had these full worlds. It's even more so in 5th Edition. Right. Uh, those are, uh, are a side quest uh, that just adds flavor to the game itself. So in some of the things that you've seen, Troy, with 5th Edition... Um... You know, do you do you see people um, employing fighter a lot, or do you see people moving away from fighter for in favor of other classes? Um, pretty much everybody that I've seen playing, and there's quite a few, everybody has something that can cast spells and heal. Right, and it's mm -hmm. and it's uh, odd to me that right, it's definitely a lot broader, and we saw that in fourth edition with all the healing charges <laughs> and things yeah. that fighter could do. Uh, there's not a whole lot of healing that the fighter does in this. Uh, but with the pairing of Eldritch Knight in the class, now we've brought magic into fighter. Yeah. Um, and that seems to fit the theme where Forgotten Realms is sort of the de facto world setting. Mm -hmm. um, Forgotten Realms and Faerun are a middle to high magic world mm -hmm. setting. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, a lot mm -hmm. different than the Greyhawk and things that we would True. play in. So, you know, a broader understanding of magic across the classes is not um, out of out of place. Um, it is just a lot different, though, than some of the mechanical or thematic choices made in some of the earlier editions. Mm -hmm. With the standard fighter, human standard fighter, who mm -hmm. all he can do is swing his sword, is rare in 5th edition play that I've seen. Yeah, and it's, it's, it is one of the things that's different in 5th edition, where that was, uh, like, just a little bit ago as we're talking about, first and second touting. Play a fighter. There's so much. Look, I mean, look, look at our a couple of our classes that we did. We yeah. had characters that were human fighters, mm -hmm. and they had a thing was an axe or a bow, yeah. and that was it. Mm -hmm. And people lost their minds because they didn't they didn't think you could do anything. They didn't think they could do anything. Yeah. Well, they definitely had a lot less options than some of the other classes. Right. But we we had put those classes together and those scenarios together. Mm -hmm. To limit their options because we wanted them to do a specific thing. Right. Yeah. In the coursework, uh, we, we do different workshops and things. Um, we had specific goals that we were trying to meet. But, um, you know, it's very easy when you see the wizard over there flipping through their spell book. Or the ranger even has got access to different magical abilities mm -hmm. or shape-changing druid guy. Like, well, what the heck yeah. am I supposed to do? Uh, Attack. You know, Attack. Attack a lot and be attack, good attack, at it. Attack, yeah. uh, the, it. You know, you are still up front with the barbarian. You're still up front with the cleric. Um, you know, you can be the defender. You can be the damage dealer. And that option is still available to you as a fighter. And if you find that the, the player's handbook resources, those uh, different archetypes, aren't that interesting to you, Gwydion just ran the list. Um, pick up one of those expanded content and mm -hmm. see what those classes do. When you play... Uh... Weapons master, uh, the battle master, and so on, and you take like a great weapon fighting, um, your raw damage absolutely fixes uh, all the swing issues of big weapons, and now you're actually doing more damage uh, over a dueling uh, fighter, yeah, uh, and so on. So, there's a lot of mechanics that they took into consideration and fixed when they were talking about uh, Fey World, Fey Rune, and so on, like this. Uh, 5e has really opened it up uh, to do just about anything. I mean, there was a lot of people that were complaining about 3rd edition 
AD&D not being as imaginary or open as uh, the original system. Mm -hmm. And I think 5e incorporated that because right now in, in our gaming session that, that we're holding uh, on Wednesday night, every other Wednesday night at uh, Graffiti Games uh, <laughs> in, in uh, Ozark, Missouri, uh, we have a fey ability. Everybody sure. at third level gets their fey upbringing. And I'm a dwarf cleric. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, can you believe that, really? And again, uh, with a fey ability of jump, just because it's funny. <laughs> well, you would pick jump for the... I, yes, I would. So... so I picked a particular creature that whenever I became of age or third level that I got that uh, particular ability. Oh, so, yeah. sounds fun. But uh, it is. <laughs> fighter is definitely, um, you know, can still be very dynamic. Mm -hmm. It does demand a different play style, but, um, you know, that... that is still there from the old editions where we've got mm -hmm. that you know sort of heroic feeling all of the core of the game is still there and definitely with the options open uh one of the things that we we haven't talked about but by the time of third edition um you got different um, pros and cons to different character races but no longer did you have different restrictions on the level you could advance to uh, beyond that true multiclassing is still an option and can provide you with a lot of different um, abilities or pathways to create interesting character concepts. So, um, you know, if you find that uh, the fighter will start really strong up to a certain point for you, uh, don't be afraid to jump off into something else, and um, you could end up creating a very dynamic and powerful character that way. Along the same kind of lines, one of the things uh, we, we mentioned this before, uh, if you have a brand new player at your table for whatever reason, mm -hmm. I would encourage you to give them a pre rolled human fighter as their very first yeah. character the defender subclass or um, just in this one with the with, with no sword special kid. abilities no skills no spells he's just going to swing mm -hmm. a sword and that's mm -hmm. what he's going to do because that player as a new player doesn't know about spells doesn't understand casting time doesn't know the doesn't, mechanics doesn't yeah. there's so many things that they're not aware mm -hmm. of and to just hand them a player's handbook and say come back next week after you've read this five times <laughs> that you're going to lose them. Mm -hmm. So hand them a pre-generated, because you don't want to spend three hours with them explaining how to make a character, yeah. a pre-generated human fighter, not, a, not an Eldritch Knight, no spells, and just let them learn their first time playing mm -hmm. how to do the dice, how to move, all the all those other things. And over the course of the night's play, you'll see that this guy, he's a thief. Yeah. He can do some really cool stuff. This guy, he's a spellcaster. He did some awesome things. Explain to me again how fireball works. <laughs> this guy's a dwarven cleric, and he's spouting off about his god and smiting the crap out of skeletons. That was pretty cool. Yeah. And they let them learn the game by playing the game. But if yeah. you give a new player a character that has all these cool abilities and skills, you're going to overwhelm them. We're going to yeah. lose them as a player. Mm -hmm. Give them a, a human fighter because they know what a human can do. They know they can't see in the dark. Yeah. They, know that, they know there's yeah. only so much they can carry. So they know they don't have any special abilities. Like, can you find a secret door in that wall? Why no? Can you? No, because we're human. So they'll learn what the different races can do. They'll learn about the different character classes and who can do what and how it, and the yeah. mechanics of it and have fun with it. And they'll learn through play. And the, the next thing you know, they're going to be saying, I want to make a character like that. We uh, we found this is true for any edition. And for most of the games, if you have a yes. fighter type archetype, uh, so if you're in a space game or, or Wild West or something uh, like Spelljammer, that's a little bit of combination of all that. Um, the the human fighter is something they've seen in fiction, they've read in stories, they can understand. Every and they, movie but, has a human fighter. <laughs> but the class tends to be very survivable and very accessible. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so sure. if you um, eliminate a lot of the extra that <clears throat> needs to be learned to become you know very proficient at the game, you can bring someone into the game and allow them a starting point to explore and expand on their own. And Absolutely. be real stingy with magic. Even <laughs> if it is for a fighter, be stingy with the magic weapons, the magic armor, the cloaks, the rings. Be stingy with it. Let things progress uh, normally, slowly, because when you get things that are way more powerful than what you have planned in your homebrew or in the module, you as a game master are having to change everything from then on up so yeah. so yeah. be really careful with what you do when you do where you do what you allow yeah. like we've mentioned before 
but just be stingy with uh, with magic. Yeah, don't give your players anything that they will be using against your monsters in the future <laughs> that's going to derail your plans. And right. if you do uh, give them something and it's been breaking the game, uh, there's all sorts of things that can happen to items. They can lose them if you, <laughs> if you drop in a pit. They it get can break. stolen. They run out of charges. Yeah, uh, or it can it can uh, have a crack in the one can have a crack in it. So now instead of six die six fireball, it's one through six die six yeah. fireball. Uh, or it doesn't have twenty charges. It only has two. I don't know where that why that zero is flashing on and off. Mm. You know, <laughs> as you were saying, because it's only two. There's things you can do to take care of that if they're swimming, if they get wet, you know, if, if yeah. they go swimming, it can drop off. There's ways to take it out of the game, and don't be afraid to do that. So some Just a level. Good up. general game mastery advice there. Um, but we see it happen often in 5th edition, mm -hmm. where um, we tend to see a lot more high level. Earlier yeah. versions, not early, uh, earlier editions, you know, I tended to play in the 5 to 7 uh, level. Mm -hmm. There were definitely rules and um, campaigns that went... I mean, we talked about the Immortal set in um, the Red Box or Five Box set, yep. and those came in the level second edition. And, you know, uh, third third edition had epic levels up to forty. Mm -hmm. So some of these um, games do end up with higher level characters, and um, that's something to be cautious of. Um, but it's also one of the things that we recommend as a player not to bank on. So if you're going to wait to become powerful at level fourteen. You need to make sure that you're powerful at level six so that the goblins don't come up and just trash your character. Mm -hmm. um, so just be aware of certain things like that. Fifth edition, as a, in its play style, does um, expect, I think, a slightly higher level character than yeah. what we're used to yeah. in the older editions. And so if you're getting into fifth edition from the older editions, expect that you may see some higher level characters, and that's not uncommon. So... Um, that can be a lot of fun, too, when you get into the fighter, because it, as the fighter progresses in level, you're going to be able to gain the extra attacks, get the different battle master things. Um, as an Eldritch Knight, you'll have more access to spells. So it's just an improvement and you know opens your options as you level with the way that D&D 5th Edition is structured. And as so, a player, it's okay to run. It is all okay. As a GM, it's but, but, okay to have your as a uh, character. Your... It's okay to run. Well, yeah, don't run as a player. You're sitting at the table. Yeah, it's gonna yeah, be... yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> anyway, uh, did you have a question? We got a gentleman with us. No, we just forgot his tunic. Good job. So, see what happens when you don't do the right drugs in the morning. Right. Well, I recommend Kevin. <laughs> like, uh, it's recommend. all good. We're working so, with a studio audience this evening. Yeah, yeah go ahead. More, I found that like a lot. Five E can a lot of people have their players start higher as well. Which is also fair. Um, just depends on the content you're running. Um, we prefer to start our characters, our players at level one. But if you're going to jump into the middle of some of the modules that are available and they're meant for 10 to 15 yeah. level characters, you're going to have to start at 10 or you're going to be killing a lot of guys. Yeah, it's more fun to build your character at the level one instead of trying to figure out a backstory from level 10. Well, yeah. that's fair. That's, again, game mastery. We're worried more about the fighter. Um, so, you know, as it goes into playing a fighter, um, you know, those options are still available. A very fun and dynamic class that, um, you know, shouldn't be overlooked, even in 5th edition. I think especially in 5th edition, where some of the other player classes do have a lot of different spell mm -hmm. options or things that can be done. Um, you know, with Faerun tending to be a high or middle to high magic world, um, you may have the ability to get some really cool magic items that really add that extra flavor for your fighter that the sorcerer is just never ever going to be able to use so yeah. um you know check it out spend some time with it um we really enjoy fighter i still play the paladin or sorry cleric i, I make fun of the paladins but i play the <laughs> uh well i mean i can wear scale mail and hit stuff with a mace yeah. and cast spells and go nah, to so that's where <laughs> i tend to play but um you know, I always appreciate having a good fighter mm -hmm. at my side mm -hmm. as we're taking out the mm -hmm. bad guys, protecting the rest of the party, and saving the world. You bet. Troy uh, is an absolute master at the zero level campaign, <laughs> where where you started actually zero level with nothing and no knowledge, and and you start gaining skills and experience on up, and that makes for an incredible start for anyone, but especially for a fighter, because when you're absolutely zero level with no experience, 
only an ideal or you just found yourself knocked out and rowing a boat <laughs> when you wake up uh, chained to the oar. Um, you're going to start out as a fighter. Yeah, you're uh, going to pick up a stick and hit something. Yeah, and you're going you're gonna to grab somebody's piece of something, you know, wood to put on yourself for, uh, for armor and strap it to your arm. You start out as a fighter, and, and again, those zero-level campaigns can really open up the uh, concept, the gameplay, the mechanics, uh, mm -hmm. make a lot of explanations, see how a player is going to play, and you can uh, yeah. uh, find out uh, what alignment, uh, they might work with and well, then work from the fighter on up to where they're now choosing yeah. their path because of their experience and what they've seen they can do instead so, of just choosing a first step. The concept of a zero level game is something that comes out of first and second edition and there's a few modules that have been published that actually help you run a zero level mm -hmm. and it can be fun to do for um, players that don't know what they want to play yet or if you happen to be running a game for new players and they want to have the opportunity to sort of explore before settling on something. So and, if the zero level campaign is something that intrigues you and you want to know more about it, uh, we are planning a video on just a zero level game, how to build it and what things need to be in it for your players and why. Yeah. So watch for that coming soon to YouTube near you. I'll be a half orc. <laughs> it's on his mother's side. Yeah. <laughs> Might be on my father's side on this one. Ah, uh, well. <laughs> no hey. what do you know <laughs> yes apply it to all possible situations um, but that's what we've got for fifth edition fighter you guys are playing the game out there let us know what you enjoy about it let us know some of the things that you may have changed about it um there's a lot of really cool classes i, I really enjoy fighter i really enjoy cleric and um, i'm looking forward to some of the new expansions and some of the um, homebrew or uh, independent releases that are out there that have made changes to the fighting class. Um, if you haven't started playing D&D yet, 5th edition is highly accessible, mm -hmm. and I definitely recommend starting with the fighter. Go to your local game store and just ask around who's playing D&D, because I want to as well. Mm -hmm. And sit in on a session. Uh, we could go into more on the fighter and some of the changes and so on, uh, but honestly, get out there and play. Uh, if you're playing 5e right now, you've seen a lot of it. Uh, if you haven't, uh, you might want to move to it. Uh, there, there's a lot to it. I mean, I've got pages and pages uh, of things, yeah. even just on the fighter itself in fifth edition. Uh, but those are maybes. Uh. <laughs> well, it, it's um, it gets less into the changes and more about the possibilities. Yes. Because truly, um, with the fighter or or fifth edition generally, it is a game of possibility. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you're gonna have to explore, and we definitely um, encourage that. So for I Want to Be a GM, I'm Jester Boris, and this has been D&D Through the Ages Part 3, The Fighter in 5th Edition. Joining me today, I'm Troy, the Planescape Guy, and on my left, Weeding the Long-Winded, thanks for putting up with me. We appreciate you being here, and we'll see you next time. God bless. <laughs>